Welcome to Legal Frequencies, a telecoms podcast by Evershed Sutherland, everything you never wanted to know about telecoms. My name is Vishal Babu, and I'm an associate in the real estate litigation team in London and a member of the telecoms co-group here at Evershed Sutherland. Our holiday countdown for 2023 is a What is Telecom series, helping you to understand some telecoms basics. This is the fourth in our series and we'll cover the question of what is electronic communications apparatus. Rather than refer to it as electronic communications apparatus throughout the whole of this episode, which is quite a mouthful, we'll keep it simple and use the abbreviation ECA. So what is ECA? Without reciting the electronic communications code verbatim, it essentially defines the ECA as apparatus, structures, or things designed or adapted for use in connection with the provision of an electronic communications network, lines, and apparatus designed or adapted for a use which involves the sending or receiving of communications or other signals which are transmitted by means of an electronic communications network. Now, I appreciate that that is quite a broad and somewhat esoteric description, so I like to think of ECA as being those things which an operator will seek to utilize in connection with its electronic communications network, which are most typically thought of as electronic masts and towers. With the definition of ECA being as broad as it is, however, ECA will also extend beyond those commonly thought of structures to things such as cabling, pipes and cabinets, which are more discrete in nature. Whether a particular item could be, uh, sorry, whether a particular item can be considered ECA will be a question of fact and will depend on the circumstances such as what the nature of the installation is and the extent to which any item is adapted for use in connection with an operator's electronic communications network. With all of that said, and without getting too philosophical, ECA essentially sits at the heart of the code as operators will want to be able to utilize the code to seek the right to do things such as install ECA or keep it installed under, on, or over land, carry out works in connection with the installation of the ECA, or inspect, maintain, or upgrade the ECA, all for the purpose of utilizing that ECA as part of their networks, which in turn is supposed to confer economical benefits stemming from enhanced digital connectivity. As with anything, however, it is critical to balance out the wants of an operator to utilize ECA with the rights of those landowners who face what can often be the challenging prospect of suddenly having parts of their land, including buildings, interfered with so that the ECA can be put in place, maintained, etc. I know that I personally wouldn't be too thrilled with the prospect of an operator cutting into parts of my roof to install a mask, for example. There is therefore a lot to be considered, which is why you'll find that there are various procedures and processes prescribed by the code and case law concerning how ECA can be installed and removed, how landowners are to be compensated, and how code rights come into force, many of which are topics I know my fellow colleagues here at Shed Sutherland will be looking at in future episodes. Thank you for listening. We hope you found it interesting and insightful. If you'd like any further information, then please contact Pegla Fellas or myself, Vishal Babu, at Evershed Sutherland. If you'd like to listen to any of our other podcasts in the series, they're available to download on Spotify and Apple.